Hello, my name is Keith Haswell and I'm a professional astrologer with over 40 years experience in the business and 30,000 clients worldwide and tens of thousands of students worldwide as well. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this video and this video is on a topic that all of us are very familiar with, fear and how to transform fear into success. You're going to learn so much about fear in this video that it is our friend, it is our companion in life and it can be a motivator to change and a motivator to success. There's only two emotions in the world. One is love, the other one is fear. The opposite of love is not hate. Hate is a derivative of fear. So love and fear are the only two emotions in the world and everything is a derivative of one of these. The first thing to understand about fear is that you are not a failure by feeling fear. The measure of success is not in eliminating fear but in what you do and how you handle the fears that do arise in your consciousness because you will experience fears in life. Without fear you are not going anywhere and you will find in this video that it is your constant companion. The measure of success is how you react to fear and the changes that you bring about within yourself as a result of the fear. Fears arise from your personal self-initiated efforts, they arise from your finances, they arrive, arise from your communications, they arise from your domestic environment, they arise from your relationships with loved ones and children and the social side of your life, they arise in the job and to do with health, they arise in intimate and loving relationships and partnerships, they arise from all areas of your life friendships, esteeming needs, group activities and these fears throw your chakras, your centers, your etheric centers in your etheric body, they throw them out of whack, out of balance and when this happens you start feeling lonely, you start feeling alienated, you start feeling frightened and you start feeling like a failure you start feeling disoriented. I remind you that you are a map maker and you don't need to make maps if you're in a state of utopia. So you will experience fear on multiple occasions throughout your life so that you can then make the maps for others to be able to follow on how to get out of that fear and how to work your way through that fear. Because with your increased level of understanding because you are a map maker, because you are, are on the crest of the wave of evolution, because you are a pioneer and because of your intelligence and your capacity of to, to reflect upon things within your consciousness, you are equipped to handle fears with greater clarity. There's so much chaos in the world today and so many points of crisis in the world today. In Northern Africa, in the Middle East, in the Ukraine and in Afghanistan and Pakistan and in Iraq and Iran. There's so many trouble spots in the world and this fear has an impact upon you. Because fear is a genuine emotion, it therefore is non-local. It means that fears that are arising in those trouble spots of the world impact upon your personal fears, fears of security, fears of belonging, fears for your safety, fears of your survival, fears of being lonely, fears of ill health and so forth. All of these fears speak to the need for you to set your priorities about what really matters in your life. These global points of crisis are also about setting priorities. 
about having courage. Courage is the willingness to act, even though you don't have all the answers, and even though some of the answers that you do have are wrong. Courage is the willingness to be wrong in the pursuit of what's right. It's about your convictions, your principles, your values. Fear also speaks to your clarity, your clear thinking, and your coherence to articulate a way forward. And it's also important to understand that it's okay to feel fear. It's normal, it's natural, and it's a motivator. It is basically your constant companion in life as you'll learn as we go on in this video. So don't punish yourself, don't admonish yourself, don't try to be perfect by not feeling fear. To pretend otherwise is denial. So it's okay to be afraid, but the question arises, can I handle this fear? And more importantly, can I transform it? Can I use this fear, which arises in my consciousness, from global events and activates my personal fears? Can I utilize this energy of fear? And can I transform it into success? So let's now move into an understanding of how we can transform this energy of fear into amazing success in your life. There's just so much power within this energy of fear. Power that is essential to the new way of growing and the new way of changing. Power that is vital and essential to commitment. There's just no limit to the wonder and the success that you can create in your life. Transforming fear can eliminate all of the negative ego's chatter and its false fears of abandonment, of betrayal, of rejection, of struggle, hardship and loneliness. Fears of being lonely forever. This can then set you free to work with the real fears in your life with courage, dignity, resolve, character, vision, vitality and integrity. You can then pursue the adventure that life was meant to be. More than that, you can discover a real self that was always meant to be. You can discover a more genuine and truer self by transforming fear. When you learn how to transform fear, you don't have to settle for just handling fear. You can engage your fear and make it work for you. Rather than always running from fear and handling fear, you can say, wow, I can turn fear into my companion, to my advantage. I can make fear serve me. Now we may never become allies, you say to yourself, but a fear can be a powerful tool for change. A profound energy, a force for growth. You've learned how to handle fear, but you don't have to stop there. You can put it to work in your life. You can transform it into something positive and powerful for success in your life. You know the words of power, responsibility, self-determination and freedom. And from my other videos, you've learnt a little bit about processing and programming. From my other videos, you know a little about visualization 
and techniques to work in your meditation to achieve what you want to achieve in life. From many of my other videos, you know a bit about the raw materials, the building blocks of reality, your attitudes, beliefs, thoughts, feelings, decisions and choices, and the tools that everybody has, the same three tools, desire, imagination and expectancy. It's those three tools that mould and shape those raw materials into the events and conditions of your life. You know a lot about that from my other many videos. But when it comes to turning the words into action, the means into manifestation, the techniques into end results, too many times you use too little of what you already know. So you falter sometimes even fail but you many times do succeed yes you do you often say to yourself i know what to do but i just don't do it and i don't know why other times you say to yourself i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing with my meditations and purifying the techniques and purifying my raw materials and using my tools properly, but it just doesn't seem to work. But it's time now to really deal with your fear. Fear has the phenomena of being non-local and therefore it's everywhere at once. That means that even though the fears arise from global events that don't seem to impact upon you directly, they do impact upon you in your reality, in your stimulating your fears of security, your fe fears of belonging, survival fears, health fears, loving fears, changing fears, expanding fears, and esteeming fears. They have impact upon these personal needs. Yes, there's no doubt about it, fear is non-local and it affects everything. That's why it's important to not only just handle it, but to transform it. It's important to say to yourself, I can harness these fears because the global fears and my local fears are only energy. And therefore, it can not only be harnessed, but it can be transformed into something more positive, more loving and more healing. Yes, you can transform fear into amazing growth and amazing change. To do that, we need to look at fear and ask ourselves, what is fear? Well, fear, broken down into its raw energy, is simply fear is thought coupled with feeling that threatens and jeopardizes. Fear is thought and feeling of separation. It is the thought and feeling of being alone and lonely. It is the thought and feeling that you will be alone and lonely forever. But that's not enough. Fear threatens and puts you in jeopardy physically, etherically, emotionally and mentally. Every part of the limited self is threatened. Anything that does that is fear. Now most people are not even aware that they have an etheric self and they regard the emotional self and the mental self as just silliness. Men say, this is just something that women do, this fear thing in their chauvinistic self. Fear must belong to all levels of the limited self for it to be real. But 
Because it is energy that's associated with the limited self, it can be transformed by the spiritual self. That bears repeating. Because it is energy of the lower self, it can be transformed by the spiritual self. Just understanding the true constitution of fear puts you in a very strong position of power to transform it. We must also understand that fear is instinctual. It is part of the instinct to survive that is not only part of the human kingdom but also is expressed and experienced by the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. You know yourself that animals experience fear. That's how they keep themselves alive in the wild. And the way to make a plant put forth abundant fruit is to prune the tree to within an inch of its life and it will give a greater crop of fruit in the next season. Fear is also a great teacher. In infancy we learn how to mould and shape our behaviour through our survival needs, our belonging needs and our security needs. And in adolescence, our fears drive us and encourage us to develop our esteeming needs and our creativity needs. And in adulthood, it impacts upon a whole range of your needs. Fear is a harsh teacher at times, but it is a teacher. An expedient one, most frequently, Beyond that, fear is a companion of failure. It is always there, haunting and threatening all potentials of failure. Failure of our personal initiatives, failure to handle our finances, failure in communication with those close to us, failure in providing security in the home environment and having security in the home environment, failure and rejection in the social side of life, failure of not being a good enough parent, failure in the job, failure with our health, failure with exercise and diet rituals and routines, failure in intimacy and close relationships and partnerships. In that respect, fear is a great motivator to success. Beyond that, it is a wake-up call to fear failure rather than to experience it. It is also a companion of success. It moulds and shapes your thinking processes through an instinctual belief and understanding of the law of attraction. You attract towards yourself that which you put out in the way of thoughts and feelings. Fear is a great motivator because just as necessity is the mother of invention, so fear is the father of invention. And finally, fear is an automatic response. It's a natural response built in to your DNA. So it's important to let it in that fear is not only the thought and feeling of separation, of aloneness and forever alone and lonely, not only is it a threat and a jeopardy to your physical well-being, but also to your etheric well-being, to your emotional well-being and to your mental well-being. Beyond that, fear is an automatic response and an instinctual response, a great teacher and a great motivator, a companion of your failure and a companion of your success and it's also a universal wake-up call. It is now from that vantage point of understanding what fear is and how it functions and works in your life that you now have the capacity and the ability to transform fear 
into amazing success. It becomes more than just an abstraction relating to your sense of security. It becomes a method and a means of growing. So how does one handle fear? Each person has been taught and conditioned in childhood, adolescence, young adulthood and adulthood and so each person has their own particular way of handling fear. These are what we can refer to as the conscious means of handling fear, which when used guarantee that fear will be destructive, that fear will be damaging. The words may be familiar. The first of these is denial, to deny that Fear is even there in your life. Secondly is to turn to the anaesthetics of martyrhood, self-pity, guilt, nobility, stagnation or procrastination, righteous blame, repression and suppression. And if these don't work, to just discount it and to say, oh no, fear, I don't have any fear, I'm fine. Then of course you can discount fear by simply turning to your addictions. Physical, emotional, mental addictions, drug addictions, overeating on food, overdoing it on the social side of life, sex addictions and so forth. It's important to understand too because you're on the crest of the wave of evolution to understand that as your love increases so your fear of loss increases. You say to yourself, the fear of losing you becomes all-consuming as my love for you increases. Another way of discounting or denying or distracting from fear is by having an anxiety attack. So these are some of the ways that we generally deal with our fears. Denial, discount, defence, distraction, avoidance, rejection and refusal. These are human responses to fear. But you can always be assured that when fear is handled with any of these devices or mechanisms or responses, it will always be destructive. Physically, etherically, emotionally and mentally. All of you are involved in growth. You are certainly involved in growth and have been for decades. And you know yourself that the knee-jerk responses to fear is to just face your fears, just face your fears. My suggestions for you to handle your fear is one, identify specifically what is your particular fear? What is it that you are afraid of? Two, play that through, that fear, play that through to its natural conclusion in your meditation. Or you think, won't that have impact upon it and won't that bring about the fear? No, because it's your intent that is in the meditation that is important and your intent is to analyze and to understand and to comprehend. Three is admit to yourself that you are afraid and most importantly that it's okay to be afraid. It's normal, it's natural. Four is to understand that even though the impact may be on emotional levels or mental levels, that it is still having impact upon you on physical and etheric levels. Through the release of chemicals and hormones and substances into your body, such as adrenaline, lactic acid, cortisol, and tryptophan, all of which can be harmful to your system. Five, you ask yourself, what is in jeopardy here? What is being threatened? Is it power? 
Is it success? Is it love? Is it security? Is it exposure? Is it judgment and punishment? Is it pain? Is it impotence? Is it destruction? The sixth step is to consider the consequence of not dealing with this fear. The seventh step is to make a commitment to learn from this fear, to learn what the lesson is that this fear contains. Remember it is a great teacher. And the eighth and final step, what changes do I need to make to allay this fear? What changes do I need to make inside of myself in regard to my principles, values, ethics, morals and actions and activities in my life? What changes do I need to make inside of myself that this fear is calling for? Because this fear is, represents an opportunity for change. And when you make those changes inside of yourself, you change the whole dynamic of the impact that this fear can have in your life. So that's the way to transform fear into amazing success. So I suggest that you play this video a number of times because it contains a lot of information here for you and I won't talk too much longer, just sufficient to say that I'm happy to be able to help you with doing your horoscope chart for you free of charge. Visit my website www.mysteryofsirius.com and submit your birth details. I'll send you your horoscope chart together with 12 CDs out of my first book, What Really Matters, on astrology, meditation and reincarnation. Look, you can become more of who you really are by expanding your consciousness, by expanding your understanding about the nature of reality and your place in that reality. Just the information that you've gained from this video is a massive understanding about the nature of fear and how fear can be your ally in life, can be your teacher in life, can be your companion in life and be a motivation to change. So I thank you for your attentiveness here. It's been a wonderful opportunity that uh, I've taken up here to delve into a very deep and powerful and impactful subject. And I look forward to working further with you should you decide to submit your birth details. Thank you.